When you watch videos on YouTube and everyone seems to be having a different experience than you, and you're about to undergo a surgery that a lot of people, a lot of men have gone through, you may be a little concerned. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question, a post from one of the audience members regarding his enlarged prostate, and it's an interesting situation. For those of you who do not know me, my name is John Lynn. I'm a urologist in Gilbert, Arizona, and the urologist who works at Sunrise Urology. Let's get right into it. When you cre create videos on YouTube, a lot of people are gonna have questions in, in, in the comment section, and this one came from Ron Robbins at Ron Robbins 2723 on YouTube. And he writes, hi again, Dr. Lin. I guess I answered his questions before. Hi again, Dr. Lin. I have to say that I'm actually jealous hearing how all of your patients had to pee so often before their surgeries. My TURP has been rescheduled for 20 days from now. And my big issue is the opposite. I have chronic retention. Six months of self-catheterizing four times a day with large volume strain and 10 urinary tract infections, including the current one, which is resistant to every antibiotic. I have only moderate BPH, but with that bladder blocking median lobe, oh, so lucky. My prostate issue was never too obvious until an unrelated minor surgery caused my bladder to check out and overfill without my knowledge for a month. I had 1,400 milliliters drained at one time. I've been doing self cast now at least four times a day and bladder itself seems to have more normal sensation and control. What freaks me out is I have never seen TURP testimonials from patients with my condition. Can I expect the same great results as your typical patients, I wonder? My urologist is awesome. He will be using the loop with saline irrigation. Like your patients, I'm not needing any hospital stay, but I'll be wearing that Foley catheter for a few days. Thanks for all you do. All right, Ron, let's get into it. You, you, asked and you mentioned so many things that I think we need to address. First of all, I will disclose that I'm not your doctor. I'm not providing medical advice directly to you. I'm speaking in general. Of course, you have to talk to your urologist regarding your specific situation. But based on what you've told me, I just want to reassure you that your situation, meaning after undergoing anesthesia for some sort of unrelated surgery and then not being able to pee, we it is so common we have a term for it. It's called post-operative urinary retention, post-operative urinary retention. And this is very, very common. I don't know how old you are, but among my older patients who already have an enlarged prostate, they have suffered with the problem for a long time, but they don't address it. And because this enlarged prostate issue is an insidious problem, it comes on very, very slowly. Most guys have no idea that is actually occurring until something like what happened to you occurs, meaning after surgery, anesthesia kind of tipped you over the edge, and now all of a sudden you could not pee. So your situation, post-operative urinary retention, is extremely common. As a matter of fact, I saw a patient yesterday, and I saw multiple patients last week with urinary retention. Not necessarily after surgery, but urinary retention, meaning they couldn't go at all. <laughs> and typically, these guys come in, and it is not uncommon for, they to for them to come in and say, Doc, I've been peeing fine just before the surgery, and all of a sudden, I couldn't pee. Or I've been peeing fine before, and then all of a sudden, one day, I couldn't pee. And I, later, I find out that it's due to an enlarged prostate. Well, the fact is, you have not been peeing fine for a long time, except you just ignored it. And now, all of a sudden, you couldn't pee. It finally caught up to you. All right. So you said that you've been self-catheterizing four times a day for a while now, and also multiple infections. So anytime you put a catheter, any sort of foreign body inside your bladder, urethra, there's always a chance of getting a bladder infection. But what I find more common is you not catheterizing 
often enough. My patient's not catheterizing often enough, meaning they leave a lot of urine in the bladder and they don't empty their bladders. That is like, imagine a stagnant pond with bacteria growing. If you're not constantly emptying that pond, bacteria is going to overgrow and you may suffer with urinary tract infections. So for my patients who suffer urinary retention, catheterizing four times a day, and they're getting bladder infections, I recommend that they drink more water and catheterize more frequently. No, there's, patients ask me, well, how many times should I be peeing every single day? Well, there's no right or wrong answer. It depends on whether or not you're a, you are on a water pill, whether or not you are drinking a lot of water, whether or not you have a lot of activities that you're doing, physical activities, so you, are you sweating a lot or not? So it depends on your in, intake and also what, you, what else you're doing, what type of physical activity you're doing. But on average, on average, a person pees about seven times a day. So if you're catheterizing four times a day and that is all you're doing, you're not voiding on your own, then you're probably under catheterizing yourself. You may want to ask your urologist and, and determine whether or not it's good to self catheterize more to empty your bladder better to minimize the risk of infections. So antibiotic resistant infections are very, very difficult to treat, sometimes requiring an IV that you may go home with the IV and a nurse will have to come out to administer antibiotics. It's a big mess. So whenever possible, we like to avoid these infections because sometimes these infections can go into your bloodstream and then you get really, really sick. So we want to avoid that whenever possible. Consider drinking more water and self-catheterizing more frequently to empty your bladder if you're not voiding on your own. And when you said that after surgery, you couldn't pee, they drained 1400 cc's out of your bladder, that's a lot of urine. Normally, the bladder holds about four to 600 cc's. So the drain almost three times the normal amount from the bladder, it makes me worry because I wonder how long the bladder's been distended like that over a long period of time. When the bladder gets stretched like that for a long time, it loses its ability to squeeze. And what ends up happening is no matter what type of surgery that we do to de-obstruct you, even when the prostate is wide open, no more blockage. Sometimes the bladder has lost its ability, no more muscle tone to, to empty itself. And that means you may have to push on your bladder to try to empty, or if you can't empty after surgery, maybe self-catheterizing after that. So that's one of the things that we worry about whenever the patients wait too long and then they finally come in in urinary retention, then we operate on them. That's always something that we worry about. Often, I can look inside the bladder and determine whether or not that there's enough tone in the bladder. Also, I get history from the patient, whether or not he could still void on his own. So if there's good tone and the patient's telling me that he's still able to void, then generally, after surgery, after opening up the prostate, de-obstructing the prostate, the patient has a very good chance of being able to void on his own. You also mentioned this median lobe. Well, the prostate, if you think about it, is a gland. Think of it as, a, as an oval gland, if you will, with an opening in the middle. When we're younger, this gland with the opening in the middle, through which the urine travels from the bladder to the rest of the urethra, the P-tube, over time, not only does the prostate grow outward, it also grows inward to block your urine. Often it comes in from the sides, from the sides of the prostate. But in your case, your prostate was growing so much, it's coming in to the bladder, and that's the median lobe. So it, it's not just the sides, but also the bottom or the posterior aspect of the prostate is growing up like this. And apparently, based on what you're telling me, it's growing into the bladder. And what happens is when the bladder is trying to squeeze and you've got this, this prostate growing into the bladder, this median lobe growing into the bladder from the prostate, Whenever you pee, the bladder is trying to squeeze like this, and you've got the prostate sitting, the median lobe sitting here, trying to squeeze, and then the opening is over here. This thing acts as a ball valve. So bladder tries to squeeze, urine tries to go around it, and then this thing kind of ball valves and blocks off your flow. 
So we call that a ball valving median lobe, believe it or not. That's how we describe a median lobe that serves as a ball valve that is blocking your flow. That may or may not be happening with you. So if you if your urologist did a cystoscopy, which sounds like he did or she did, hopefully you were able to see the median lobe growing into the bladder because that's what I usually do when I perform a cystoscopy on a patient. I will show him what I'm seeing and then once he sees the blockage coming in from the size of the prostate and also the median lobe growing into the bladder, causing a ball valve, blocking his urine, the light bulb goes off, goes off and he understands this is a mechanical obstruction. Mechanical obstruction. And um, your indication to undergo TURP is that, first of all, you, you keep getting infections, it sounds like. Number two, complete urinary retention. Those are some of the indications to undergo a TURP procedure. And it is very, very common, unfortunately. There are, there are about 40 million men in the U.S. every single year with BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, also known as an enlarged prostate. So what you're going through is very, very common. If you ask around, if you pipe up among your friends, your guy friends, or even your lady friends, I bet they'll know, oh yeah, I know so-and-so who had to go through that surgery or some other surgery for his enlarged prostate. Lastly, you mentioned your urologist is doing a saline bipolar TURP using saline using a wire. You said wire. It's actually a loop that is used to resect or remove the prostate that's blocking your flow, including most likely that median lobe. That's the first thing we will reduce or remove during your TURP, typically. And then that creates a nice channel for the saline to go through so that we can see clearly what's going on during that TURP procedure. Your urologist doing this procedure as an outpatient is, I think, relatively common nowadays because for the, for the experienced urologist, experienced surgeon, and if he is meticulous in his technique in making sure that there's no bleeding, usually this is done as an outpatient unless the patient has other medical conditions which may require him to stay overnight. Typically, for the experienced surgeon, this is done as an outpatient. Now. Patients, tape the duration of catheterization, meaning how long that catheter stays inside your bladder and your prostate and your urethra, varies by surgeon. So today, I did two TURPs. One patient went home without a catheter, and another patient with a large prostate went home with a catheter. So both are outpatient, just like what you're describing, except you know, one patient, no catheter, and the other patient one ca has a catheter. The thing is, the patient who has a catheter, went home with a catheter, is having his catheter removed in the office tomorrow. So the typical catheterization time for my patients is less than 24 hours if he goes home with a catheter. Your mileage may vary, depends on the comfort level of the urologist and the experience level of the urologist, but Typically, for me, my patients, either no catheter or less than 24 hours because I've done a lot of these. Every single week, I'm doing TURP procedures to help make America pee again. Ron, I thank you so much for your question. If you have any additional comments, please leave them below, and I would love to hear how your surgery goes in about three weeks. would love to hear about your recovery course and your outcomes. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Please take care of yourself and each other. Bye-bye.